on Rescue TV. I'm super excited to bring you gorgeous Robin Rawley <laughs> to the rescue camp. <laughs> we you. lured you over. You did, you did. You're here on a whirlwind visit, promoting body image, good mm -hmm. health, and eating the rainbow. Mm -hmm. You're here on behalf of Australian Food Juice. Mm -hmm. And um, why are you working with them? Well, I was really interested to find out that 80% of people in Australia and even higher in adult groups aren't eating two serves of fruit a day. And I was kind of shocked at first. I was like, and then I thought about my own stuff. I was like, do I eat two serves of fruit every day? Um, and so I teamed up with Fruit Juice Australia because they're doing this awesome campaign about, you know, if every day, if you can't get your two serves, 125 mils of fruit juice can really help you, you know, contribute to your diet with a good vitamin C and potassium and folate and help make up the serves. So it was awesome to be a part of it and just to tell people, like if you can't eat fruit with a fiber, have the fruit juice. I think what's really interesting is that you've always been a very honest and open advocate yeah. and also a protagonist for conversation around body image, yeah. diet, what's healthy, what's not. And in an mm. industry like modeling, there's a lot of pressure, yeah. obviously, to look a certain way. Have you ever done body uh, food elimination diets? No, you know, I did do a lot of restrictive diets when I was trying to do straight size modeling. And I have like done a few cleanses here and there um, of just eating lots of fruit and vegetables as unlimited as I wanted. Yeah. And, and there have been times where that did make me feel good, but it's not sustainable. You can't do that all the time. You send yourself crazy. <laughs> and uh, so I just live my life by moderation is key and uh, quality, good quality food. So quality, quality produce, quality food, food rich with nutrients that's going to fill you up and sustain you know good skin and hair and all that so that's what I live by. Why do you think that we've become so obsessed as a society about uh, certain foods mm. having this charge good food bad food mm. super food uh, sugar high this you know yeah. why, why do you think this lexicon has crept into our uh, language? I think you know as a society we're not growing our own food anymore we're not going into the garden we're just getting crazy because we've got all this time in our hands to analyze all the food. But to be honest, human species were scavengers. We ate everything. We're omnivores. We eat what we can find. And, you know, I garden now, so I know the lengths that it takes to get a tomato or to get a lemon or lime. And it's a lot of work. And my more focus is now we need to really work on Mother Nature and fixing the environment because the soil is getting so depleted that you could say if you wanted to eat that and that, but if it doesn't have the nutrients, you're not going to get any benefit from it. Do you think that since becoming a mother or since being pregnant, you've become more aware of nutrition versus yeah. bad? Uh, I mean, that's been my motto for a long time now. I just think bad diets are ridiculous and it's a stupid way to, to put yourself through and your body through because it's just, you're going to be crazy. Like, you're going to deny, 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 and then boom, you're going to binge. And I've seen so many of my friends do it. I see them come over and I'll be cooking something and they're like, I'm not going to eat it. I'm not gonna eat it and they go crazy look at their eye and then they next second they're like ah and I'm like it just just be okay with some food you know like sometimes it's okay to have Nutella like sometimes it's okay to have Nutella croissant or you know it's okay I just live my life by moderation and like Europeans do like we were talking about before French people and Italian people they have the food every day and it's fine in the small amounts. Do you, was there a time in your life where you were obsessed with food and you were obsessed with your body and was there a moment where you looked in the mirror and you thought I actually love all of it yeah I mean I think you know that's I wish I could say I love all of it but then you have your days where you're like oh god I need to work out um but you know I remember feeling much better about my body when um a when I started modeling for bigger sizes and also seeing my curvy friends be so comfortable butt ass naked in front of people that was shocking for me because really? I was like Oh my god, they're like just standing there naked and they're so comfortable with it and they're like way, you know, like a way larger size than me, but they were so confident and so happy that that really inspired me to like to become that way as well. And did you find um, that you had like a shift in attitude, you know, when you're pregnant? Yeah. I always find with my friends who are going through a pregnancy, <laughs> they fall into two camps. Mm -hmm. The ones that are absolutely confident and they, they get that their body is a vessel for life and they're enjoying the moment mm. and the others who were actually fighting with nature and trying to diet and obsessed about yeah. so how did how did you handle pregnancy having been a model having mm. been so aware of your physicality uh, yeah i think i definitely was more like the first type i you know i didn't even weigh myself and i asked people not to tell me my weight because i didn't want to even think about it as a negative thing and 
I did it very much for my daughter and for my baby. I was like, it, it is about her. And I had to forego a lot of body hang-ups that I had. Um, you know, even when you're delivering, it's like your butt ass naked, it's like full on, you know. And, uh, and I think at that age, to go through that, because I'm quite young compared to some of my friends that are pregnant now, I don't know, you know, I just wish that I wanted her to be so healthy and that was my main concern. So, but some of my friends are going on diets now and they're pregnant and I'm like, be careful, like don't, you know, just freaking enjoy it, man. Eat as much as you, you know, as you need and want and fill your baby with good nutrients. And and afterwards, what, what did you do to get yourself, was there a pressure on you, in you to, uh, to get I back to, you know, a certain yeah. way? There was, um, I had to work pretty soon after and you know I'm, I'm very fortunate that I model where I wear a model and, and people really understanding I did an in-style shoot they were so lovely and you know I was definitely much bigger than I was and and I was so hungry after birth oh my god I could not eat enough and there was not <laughs> enough food given to me because I was in LA by myself with my partner so next time if I have a baby again I'm gonna have someone my mom Cook there for cooking you. for me because I was like I'm starving could someone feed me and uh, so I wish actually I was fed more. So I lost it a bit too quickly, but purely for that reason. Great. So just to wrap up, I think everyone is very curious to know how you maintain your beautiful glowing health. <laughs> and I know that you travel a lot and so there's not kind of a day on a plate yeah. that you know they can copy or even know mm. about. But you know, do you have this kind of a, a rhythm, a formula for what you'll eat for breakfast, yeah. what kind of snacks you have? what you'll eat for lunch and dinner and yeah. yeah I'm really curious to know. Like well I definitely like yeah I definitely eat quality so it's you know in America I tend to shop local uh, markets and uh, or places that use good quality ingredients especially when they're making their bread and uh, so you know morning I have like my, my boyfriend makes really good breakfast sandwiches so we have eggs and avocado on toast and then you know for lunch or we go to Whole Foods and get green juice or if we have it at home we have green juice and or we have orange juice and then at lunchtime, you know, we go out to eat and I might get a Reuben sandwich. <laughs> and then like, I might have some snacks, like fruit during the day. And then at night I'll have sushi or a roast or vegetables. I don't know, like. And you said you love to cook as well. Mm -hmm. What do you love to cook? What's your roast, favorite? Roasts are really good. I love cooking potatoes and chips and stuff. Um, She's a carb girl. I, I love, love carbs. <laughs> Why would I not love carbs? You know, in this carb debate really pisses me off sometimes because I feel like bread, if you get the wheat in the correct form, like the way French yeah, people do, and you don't double the yeast, which is a lot of countries in America double the yeast and it really upsets your stomach. Mm -hmm. So if you eat bread done by traditional French standards, you won't feel any of that bloating and stuff. I don't understand where that this whole anti-carb came from because I'm like, French people and Italians eat bread every single day, you know, and they're fine. Like, I just don't get that. But, but each to their own, I just, I love quality produce that's the best kind of advice I could give I suppose. Well you're the picture of absolute health oh. <laughs> and you, you really look beautiful and it's such a pleasure to meet you. We, we've interviewed you before but it's you're always you know one of the people that everyone is very curious to learn more about and I have to Sweet. say you're even more lovely person <laughs> both to look at and to speak to oh, than thank I could you. imagine. Thank oh, you very much for no, joining us. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to see you.